Good day viewers, Walter here. I'm going to do a bit of a vlog for you today and I apologize first off. If you're looking through my dirty windshield, I have not cleaned this vehicle in some time. It's my vehicle, nobody drives it but me and I'm not particular about how fancy it moves. But I'm off to the store. Been rather busy this week doing housework of all things and nursing and trying to keep the place going but um I want to vlog today on a subject that I hadn't thought about much before I got a Android phone and my old Android phone was my old cell phone was an Android too Well, when they sell you these cell phones from the cell phone store, they have it locked to their particular carrier. Like if you're with Verizon, it's locked to their service. at and is locked to their service. You can buy unlocked phones, and people charge more for an unlocked phone. In fact, I looked on the websites, and there's websites where you can send off and pay so much, and they'll send you a code to unlock your phone. That well, doesn't seem very fair to me. Um, I got my old cell phone and a friend of ours didn't have a cell, cell phone. So I decided to let uh, our friend use it. Well, they're on Verizon. And, uh, since I don't use the old one, they couldn't really use mine because it's locked to AT&T. So I went to AT and asked them, AT and T, why can't, why does it have to be locked to your service? Why can't somebody go rise and use it? Well, they can if you unlock it. I said, oh yeah, how do you unlock it? You just go to att.com slash unlock device or device unlock. I don't remember what it is. I'll put a link in the description. But I'm sure it's the same way with other services too. The kick of the, kick of the thing is they want to make sure you've paid off your contract first. Like if you signed a contract with that phone company for a year, year and a half or whatever, well, your contract has to be up and paid for before they'll unlock your phone for you. But it's my belief that I can get more Wi-Fi hookups around town if I'm not restricted to AT&T. So I'm going to unlock my current Android phone too. Just a little quick info for my info for my viewers. You can't unlock your own phone without having to pay some cell phone unlocking service. Right now I'm on the way to the grocery store. I'm going to get some drinks. I just came from the landfill dumping the garbage. Get some snack cakes and maybe some other kinds of food we might need around the house. Just got passed by an ambulance. Guess he's transporting somebody somewhere. saw my video yesterday where the propeller fell off my whirly gig. Um, not many of you might not know it, but Todd Empson entered, entered the P. Wall Power Express in the 2018 Whirly Gig Wars contest. And he won first prize. Um, the prize was given out by Wood Creations channel, some kind of wood creation channel, can't think of the name of it. I'll put a link in that in the description too if I can if I remember to do so. But I was I knew Todd would do pretty good on his Whirly Gig entrance. Didn't know he'd win first prize. A Whirly Gig, like the P-Wall Park Express, is an awesome video. It's an awesome Whirly Gig, so 
knew he'd do pretty good. I'll find me some good snacks to eat while I'm over here at the grocery store. I think I'll share a story with you. I noticed uh, on the news here the other day, some lady let her eight-year-old child walk around the block. I'm not going to get in an argument with people on whether that should be an acceptable practice or not. But she walked her little puppy dog around the block on a leash. And somebody called the family services on the lady for child endangerment because she let the kid walk around the block. Well, I don't think that's such a bad thing in a good, safe neighborhood. When I, where I grew up, we played all over the neighborhood. We didn't have some parent holding our hand. Some people are just fanatic as hell when it comes to interfering with other people's business. Anyway, the lady knocked on the door and answered the door and it was the police coming to say, and we heard you have a five-year-old out here walking around unsupervised. She said, no, my daughter's eight. You think about it, you send a kid off to school when he's five to kindergarten, six is in the first grade, seven is in the second grade, eight is not that young of a child to be looking out for themselves. I recall a story that had happened, I recall an instant in my childhood, and I think I might have been five or six. We lived in a little sawmill community down in that great Georgia, and down at the end of this dirt road was a, a country store, just a little old white country store. You don't want to see any more like that anymore. White wood frame country store. I think they sold gasoline. They always had plenty of candy and stuff. But my mama gave me a dime or I don't remember how much money to go to the store and get me some candy. I didn't know she was watching me from the living room window. She could see it's only like a two block walk. And I walked down that dirt road and got to the highway. I had to cross a paved highway with busy traffic on it, and I stepped out in that paved highway to go across the street to the store, stepped right in front of a car, they skidded their brakes and damn near killed me, I, I was lucky I didn't get run over, scared the tar out of me, I went on to the store and got my candy, I got home, she had a switch waking, waiting for me, she gave me a switch and it's another thing I call defects on you if you give your kid a whipping now. But I learned the hard way to... I learned a lesson from her to look next time I cross the street. So it might seem like a cruel thing to do to whip a child, but if you can teach them right from wrong, or something to keep them safe, it's well worth it to get their attention. not a very big story, but I thought I'd share that with you. My wife is recovering quite well from her surgery. She's able to get up and down the steps and walk around and do things. She just can't lift anything or lift her arms over her head. So I'm still toting the laundry basket up and down the steps. It reminds me, I gotta go put stuff in the dryer when I get back. I forgot about it this morning. It's a quiet day here in Griffin, Georgia. Not a whole lot of going on.
I have my GoPro just attached to the sun visor and I noticed just now it's vibrating up and down quite a bit. Might be affecting my footage on my camera, I don't know. Because I got a tire just a little bit out of balance.